What's up, party people? This is Andrew, and um, I'm here to give a Unity tutorial on lighting uh, and setting up a scene to look cool. So I'm going to show you a couple different scenes um, over the uh, next one or two or three or however many of these videos I make. Um, just a quick little heads up. Um, I'm about um, me and my partner Steven are about to launch this game right here, Alien Decimation, onto the Google App Store. Um, we created the game using Unity. Um, and uh, you guys should check it out. If you want to know a little more about me, you can check out my website at andyswy.com. I've been a professional 3D artist for the last 15 years in Los Angeles. And if you want to know more about um, my partner Steven over at Turn the Game On, you should check out his, uh, his website. And he also has a bunch of YouTube videos on his YouTube channel. Um, and he's just an all-around very cool and very smart individual. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about Unity, he, he created all the code for this game. And I did the art. So anyway, let's dive right in and talk about what, how to make cool stuff, um, lighting and setting up environments to make them look good. So this is a scene that uh, I put together especially for uh, this uh, demo that I'm going to show you guys. And um, I got most of my art assets, just so you know, from this particular uh, website, uh, TF. 3DM, they have lots and lots of amazing models for free, um, and I find myself downloading models a lot, um, uh, I, not because I can't build models or don't know how to texture them, but it's just so quick and easy to download this rather than to build it, um, and even when... Um, I work professionally on, on movies and films and whatnot and uh, professional video games. Uh, a lot of times we'll download a lot of these models. We'll end up building them ourselves later, but just kind of getting the ball rolling, especially for previs, um, uh, a plane like this comes really in, uh, really in handy. I just got done working on, um, uh, well, I shouldn't say which films, <laughs> but we ended up um, pilfering this entire database uh, in fact, I think we ended up using one of these models here for a particular film for uh, characters, and then we later, as um, as we were continued to design the models out, and uh, you know, art department started getting involved, and we had an art director come on board and whatnot. They started to tailor these to what they wanted for the film, but temporarily these worked great. So. A lot of the models you're going to see in this little scene right here are models that I got from that website. So I don't want to plagiarize or there to be any confusion that I made everything that you see because it just takes too long to do all this, especially um, just for a video talking to you guys. So this is the um, this is the scene file here. You can see what I have going on. I've got um, basically like this little town with these sort of scary looking trees. And it's just sort of like a little medieval village. And um, here's some uh, little uh, church kind of deal. It's kind of like a little, uh, kind of like a, um, something out of the game Thief. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Um, it's kind of old school, but um, I'm kind of old school. So you can see I set up these little fire cards. And now this one I didn't really finish. It was just sort of the setup for the entrance into the church. Um, and here's the inside of the church, which isn't really lit that well. In fact, you know what? I think I stopped lighting it at one point. We're mainly going to focus on the outside. So I've got a couple things going on here to sort of give this village um, ambiance. Um, so... Um, well, to start with, um, I was able to set up uh, um, these shadows sort of taken from this uh, sunrise, or sunset, sh should I say, or sunrise, it doesn't really matter, I guess, it just depends on which way is east or west, I suppose. Um, and um, 
so I have a, a sky box doing that, and then um, I have a light which is causing these shadows, and then I have um, a lot of little tiny lights flickering with halos around them and little animating fire cards in here. And then I also have a, um, a couple chimneys with some particle effects happening and we have some fog. So this is where we're going to end up. Um, this was my original scene over here. You can see my night. And if we go back to the game, that's where you would start following the night in the game, let's say. Uh, running through it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn everything off and then I'm going to turn everything back on and you're going to see what I did. So here we go. Alright, so this is what the scene looks like with everything turned off. Uh, it's pretty boring, it's pretty dull, it's pretty uninteresting. Uh, it looks like a crappy, boring game and that's not what we want. We want something that is full of life and energy and excitement. So there's a couple strategies to giving something a really exciting effect. Now the first thing that I notice a lot of people do when building a game is they basically create one big light. So even if this was casting um, and like a, an orange vibe on the scene and that orange does look better because it's matching the sky, it still doesn't give us dynamic, interesting um, uh, in an environment. What we want is something that has a lot of character to it. And even if we were to add shadows, let's say add shadows, let's change our bias. Um, even if we were to add shadows, and these shadows are not very high quality, but, you know, that's helpful and that's something, but having just one big powerful light isn't going to add subtlety or nuance and help pop things out. So what I'm going to kind of look at here is I'm going to start off with a really soft light and then look for areas that I can highlight with little pools of light throughout the scene. Um, and you notice, you notice really good art direction tends to have things like this. And actually, you know, I'm going to go ahead and point you guys to the best, most inspiring thing that I've ever um, encountered and looking into, specifically into lighting, is the ride Pirates of the Caribbean. And if you guys ever get a chance to go on the Pirates of the Caribbean and remember me telling you about this, um, these pictures don't count. These are just washed out, blown out pictures. But in reality, when you're on the ride, it starts to look like this. You get really cool... See how there's... Um, the lighting is very um, subtle. And the little details start to pop out. And you really notice it when you're on the actual ride itself. Um, yeah, stuff like this. The lighting is simple. It's, you don't see a big blah. Right? It's not just wiping everything out in the scene, kind of like my lighting is doing here. What you want, like this right here, this is that's terrible lighting. Someone was using their flash when they took a picture. What you want is something more like this. right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this light that I made for you all just now. And I'm going to turn on my moon direct. This is my original light. So this is the original light that I'm using from the scene before that I showed you guys when all the lights were on. And it's real simple. It's a real simple light. It's got a 0.76 intensity. In fact, let me find it here. There it is. It's interesting about direct lights. They, it doesn't really matter where they are. They point the same. They cast the same shadows. It's kind of a trip because in reality it wouldn't work like this. But it's symbolic, so we just have to kind of go with it. Um, so we have this sort of light very simply casting a soft blue. Because in the morning, if this was this foggy and clouded, I mean, I imagine it would be a little more um, red. But I wanted something that was a little ha more haunted and spooky. So I ended up going with like a blue color. You can see here. Um, the one that I picked. And also, my light is not very powerful. It's pretty soft. As you see, as I start to make it more powerful, it kind of loses its... Uh, uh, doesn't give us the look that we're going for. 
Okay, so there we go. That's nice. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start to look for ways of creating pools of light into the scene. And what I've already done, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn one of these on, is I've created... Hide my gizmos. There we go. Is I've created... Um, little areas of interest, okay? So like, look at this. This already is starting to look cool. There's a little area of interest inside of this bell tower. Um, we've got the light kind of pulsing uh, when I play, press play. Um, let me go ahead and press play. Um, yeah, so you can see I have actually animation linked to that light. It's kind of giving us this nice little pulsing from the little pools of light. Um, in fact, I'm going to keep keep turning these on. I have them situated throughout the scene. Uh, there's another one over there. I'm going to skip that one for now. Here we go. Let's turn this one and this one and this one on. There we go. So these guys are in these little these little sort of uh, um, I don't know what you would call them. I guess uh, uh, the word would be um, old school iron lanterns. Um, and so when we hit play, I'm going to switch back. There we go. So I have basically a card tiling with fire on it. If you go to my, um, uh, there's other another video in this pay playlist called Texture Sheet. Unity Animation Texture Sheet, and I go into great detail just discussing this one specific thing, how to create texture sheets um, to create little animations like that, and uh, I'll include a link down in the uh, notes or in the information as well. So, but the idea here is that we're not overwhelming the viewer with one big blasting light, right? We're starting to sort of subtly add these little these little nuances of light to help give the scene more of a deeper meaning, something a little more interesting. Um, another thing you can do too, say in the front, in the front of this scene here, um, let's turn on a few more things. There we go. So here we have these little animations pulsing there. So we have little pools of light. And what you can do too is you can uplight stuff. That creates a really cool effect. So let's create a, um, uh, a spotlight and let's turn it upwards. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give this entire um, sort of like, well it's not a cathedral is it? It's like a, it's like a church. I'm going to give it like this sort of haunted glow. Now, where does that haunted glow come from? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Not really sure, but we're going to start to sort of give it, like, character now. I can already hear the pipe organ in the background. So, enough of that. Um, so you can start to see, like, I'm, I'm starting to transform this into, by adding cool little lighting effects to it, into something more interesting and more entertaining than just blasting the whole scene out with light. Now, does this take a little, you know, time and energy to put together? Well, yeah, of course, you know. I mean, you're going to start to think about stuff, like, what is it I'm trying to say? Um... But, you know, that's, that's the artistic part of it. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so moving along. So another thing I want to add is uh, some, some smokestacks. So I put together these smokestacks earlier today, and they're basically just little, uh, just little, little chimneys putting off some really light smoke. Uh, this isn't a particle tutorial, but, you know, it's these little details that really help the... Um, the player kind of get in the mood um, with the story and, and the environment that you're trying to tell them. Now you might say, 
I don't have time for all this. <laughs> well, that's fine. But for those of you who do find the time to put into these little sort of nuances artistically, um, you will find that uh, your, your game will be a lot easier to pull the audience in, especially with the right kind of music. So now we got the right kind of music happening. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add some volume, some volume fog in our render settings. Turn on, there we go, some fog. relatively simply constructed environment to life, which is fine. I don't know if that's originally what I was going for, but um, I wanted something a little more spooky, but I think the reason why it's not as spooky is because I don't have any um, ghosts running around. I think if I had ghosts running around, that would add to the spookiness. Alright, so, but what I am doing is I am uplighting things. Uplighting tends to add to the, the hauntedness of something. Let's change our range, there we go. Why? I'm not exactly sure why. I guess because the shadows are cast in a way when they go upwards that makes things look um, unusual because you don't normally see that, especially during the daytime. Things tend to be lit. Uh, downward. Alright, so let's finish off our area here. And let's finish off this. Turn all those guys on. And here's our knight down in front. Now the reason why these are animating is uh, I simply just attached an animation to uh, my light and then uh, I cloned them all. So they all animate at the same at the same time. I'm not really going to show you how to do that today though. I'll show you another time. It's actually pretty easy to do. So here you can see now we're back to where we started again. We added fog, we added lights, we added a little kiss of the moon, we kept things really dark. You see a lot of contrast between things and that really helps sort of give ambience to a scene. And then if we just go around the scene a little bit here you can see um, what we ended up with. So this would work, work really well for um, like a scary, uh, haunted environment. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't other than, you know, if it's for mobile, your render time is going to be a little on the hard end. So I would, I would probably start chopping up a lot of stuff as far as like reducing polygon counts and, and draw distances and start in incorporating LODs for these trees because I don't have that for them right now. But anyway, yeah, so there's one way of boosting up a scene. Um, hopefully this was um, valuable and you learned something. Remember the main thing is you just don't want to throw one big light in there. You want to create um, lots of small pools of light um, to bring interest and depth to an environment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do another one. So check it out in video two of this series. Uh, have a great day. Bye.